Tonight, our webinar is entitled Counting the Cost, the Value of Christian Higher Education. And our presenter is Dr. Phil Cook. Dr. Cook serves as president and CEO of the North American Coalition for Christian Admissions Professional Professionals. It's a big, big name. We call it NACAP. This nonprofit organization is comprised of admissions and guidance of personnel from over 360 Christian high schools, liberal arts colleges and universities, Bible colleges, graduate schools, and seminaries throughout North America. NACAP is the sponsoring organization of the Christian College Fairs and of this virtual fair. Prior to his role at NACAP, Cook served for 28 years at his alma mater, Lee University in Cleveland, Tennessee. He additionally holds a Master of Divinity and a PhD in Higher Education Administration. Dr. Cook has been married for 31 years. He and his wife are the proud parents of three adult children and the beaming grandparents of one grandchild. As you can see, Dr. Cook, just the mention of the grandchild brings a smile to his face. So Phil, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Bev. Thank you for this opportunity and thank you all. I'm actually uh, in Nashville, Tennessee. I live in Indiana where the NACAP headquarters are, but I'm in Nashville on uh, what I what we call Papa duty. You know, the name of a grandparent's very important. Welcome to this, uh, this uh, virtual event live webinar. We're so thrilled to do this. Uh, I spent the last three days at one of our member institutions in Birmingham, Alabama, where we hosted 15 Christian high school counselors from around the country that came to one campus um, at Samford University. And we talked about this very thing we're gonna to talk to you about today, about making the case to you about why you, as a student yourself, or if you're a parent, a grandparent, a pastor, a counselor, whomever, while we think that Christian higher education is worth the cost. So thank you for joining us. I'm so pleased to do this. This is our agenda. I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about the value of college in general. Uh, we've got a little bit of data and statistics to share with you, of course, because you've got to have some data. Um, we'll share that with you in just a moment. But specifically, what about a Christian college? I'm going to make the case from my experience on one campus for 28 years, but also for the past almost two and a half years, when I've been able to be all around the country and finding out uh, the Christian colleges, universities that are part of our membership. What about the investment? You know, what, what about the tuition cost? Uh, you hear a lot of talk about that, the cost of college and higher and, and, and universities in general. Uh, the, the idea of is, is student debt a good idea? We talk about that a whole lot. Uh, and then also what specifically is the cost of going to a Christian college or university? Uh, I, I want to give you a couple of points and, and, and talk about what I think are the values the reason how it can benefit you as an individual and then also for your family. Um, I'm sure you've heard the statistic, but it varies. This particular information we're getting from one source that students who attend college in general over the course of their lifetime make between, I've seen it quoted half a million, $500,000 to as much as a million or a little more than a million dollars over the course of their career. So just looking through the lens of economic and, and financially, students who attend college earn more money than those who do not. Now there, we'll talk in a second about the power of an anecdotal story. I'm sure we've all known someone who didn't go to college. I have a family member, he didn't go to college. He started working in the restaurant industry and he worked six, seven days a week, sun up to sun down, and he's quite successful. But I'm pretty sure that if he were here telling you today that if he could go back and do it over again, he would have chosen a different route because of the the value of his life, the life that the, the quality of life, excuse me, that he had. So yes, you can have stories where people make good money that didn't go to college, but in general, the numbers are overwhelmingly positive that those that choose to go to college and finish degrees in particular make more money. Um, and he, as, as you make more through educational levels, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, uh, even doctoral degrees, as you earn more education, complete more education, your earning levels go up. Uh, and it's also an investment in your future. We, we, we think that um, when you make this investment, when you are uh, uh, paying the cost for this, you are investing in yourself and your future and your future earnings. A career tracker the same. Um, you, I'm sure you hear talk about students who finish a degree and they don't get a job right away and they're trying to get a job in their field. Generally speaking, your major may not get you um, your final job. 
And it may not get you your first job, but it will land you an opportunity to advance your career. So getting a degree doesn't always guarantee that you're in the same career field, but it does open doors and gives you opportunities uh, to a career um, and to, to, to a better successful career. Um, job security, you, you students uh, that finish degrees or alumni of colleges, have better job satisfaction and job security when they finish their degree. And then of course, there's the idea of professional networking that goes on as well. Believe it or not, there's data, which we'll show in just a second about social. Uh, what, what, is, what is my social status? What is my social setting um, whenever I attend college and go to college? Um, uh, you have more time for recreation. People report a better quality of life in general when they have finished a college degree. So these are all things that that folks uh, benefit or, 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 or glean or get when they finish a college degree. Um, even culturally, you know, more more uh, um, meeting people from other cultures or for other geographic locations. Um, the campus that I worked on, uh, at one point, we had students from all 50 states in a small town in Tennessee and students from 57 countries. So one of the things students would say was, I got to meet people outside my world, my city, my town, my state, even from around the world. So people who engage and go to college have more cultural experiences. They learn more and are able to benefit from that. Some of our schools require travel. So when you go to a college, you might have the opportunity to, to, to travel yourself. So you get the experience of going to another country or another part of the United States or, the, or, or North America, and you benefit culturally. There's data, there's survey, there's reach on physical health and well-being. People who go to college are generally more healthy. They have better healthy lifestyles. Their exercise and diet routines are better, and they live longer, those that go to college. Um, and so I think that you'll find even from a physical standpoint, from a health standpoint, folks do better to go to college. All of these are reasons why we think college is worth it. And it's worth the sacrifice that you or your family would make in that regard. And even personally, uh, people are more competitive. They have more grit, more resiliency. They can set their mind to a goal and accomplish the goal and it will serve, uh, serve you well. Uh, being on a campus frequently, students say, I don't know what I want to study. Well, from my perspective, again, it's focus on getting a degree. Now, if you want to be a teacher or get to med school or law school, that's different. I have a business degree. When I, set, when I finished my business degree, was I setting out to be a, a, an admissions enrollment person at a Christian college? No, was not on my radar. But the business degree was a goal that I could set, met that goal, then went to seminary, and then on to doctoral work because it gave me confidence that I could do and meet the academic opportunities that I had. Um, and so I want to share some slides really quickly. I'm going to move quickly through these slides, but they give the data to back up the kind of things that I'm sharing now. By the way, this is from NACUBO. NACUBO is the National Association of College University Business Officers. They're CFOs and finances and controllers. Unemployment rates for degree holders are below the national average. You finish a degree, your, your employment status is better. Now, these are a couple years old, but it's still true and holds that unemployment rates for degree holders are lower than those without degrees. Um, when you have a degree, you own more than your peers. So if you're in a certain industry and you have an attained degree, you're going to, by, by large, by the numbers in aggregate, earn more than those who don't have a degree. So again, the economic benefit of going to college is evident when you compare yourself to people in similar roles in your profession. Uh, four out of five well-paying jobs require some education or training. Now that's still the case. That's changing a little bit with some tech things. You know, you can go on and, and I would talk to families who say, my son, boy, he's been working on computers forever. He can just go right in and work it. That's true. He's got that practical, technical experience, kind of like an apprentice and he's gone on and done it. But still four out of five of those jobs that are the most well-paying are gonna require some kind of education, which is why we say going to college is worth it. Um, this is this is my favorite slide of all this data, because um, when you talk about going to college, there's very specific professional trades. I mentioned I'm going to be a teacher. I want to go to med school. I want to I want to go to law school. That's a very specific trade. But what about those of us who may not know specifically what we want to do? The kind of skills that are most associated with employers to the, to this day are these kind of softer skills interpersonal skills, people skills, soft skills. Getting a degree and finishing a degree will help a student do better in teamwork, org, uh, organizational culture, conflict resolution, all the things that you see here. And again, these skills are most in demand. What about ethics? What about morality? 
does it matter that employ or do employers looking for people who are good people or making good decisions? This is true in particular at Christian colleges around the country. Uh, communication skills, taking an idea, taking a, a project and bringing others and rallying them to your cause. Students who go to college are better able to learn communication skills and therefore are more successful in their careers. Problem solving. Um, and then again, analytical skills. I was on a campus I mentioned this week and we, we visited the business school at Sanford University. They had five students talk to us about their degree. Four of the five are, are, are studying uh, data uh, analytics very important part of what's going on around the country and these analytical skills will come in and help students. So uh, the most commonly um, sought after skills that employers are looking for are, are, are these and are, are better seen and more evident in students who go to college. And so we, we, we make that argument to you as well. Um, when you're advancing, how, how, do I get, how do I advance? Students who go to college um, are doing better in these areas. You've got to have good social skills, got to have good analytical skills. And again, a college degree, finishing a degree, position you well to do that. Full-time workers with a bachelor's degree earn 70% more than those who do not. And again, in general, you see the annual salaries there, not in every field, not in every situation, but again, the data in aggregate, the, the, the macro data says when you go to college, you're going to earn more than those who do not. And finally, investing in the degree does pay off. Um, so when your earnings uh, are maximized, when you are attending a college or university and finishing the degree. Uh, this is one of the things we talked about earlier, that higher education is more than just a private good. Um, society derives all kinds of benefits from highly educated population. People who finish a degree are more culturally involved. They're more civic minded. They're more service oriented. Uh, they're more likely to volunteer. They're more likely to vote in elections. They're more satisfied with their quality of life across the board. And these kind of things are very important when you think about whether a college education is worth it. And here's the health numbers I mentioned as well. Children of college graduates are going to be more healthy, less likely to be out of shape and weight. And then finally, poverty rates. Students who don't go to college are three times more likely to live in poverty than those who do not. So again, college investment, whatever it costs, uh, whatever you're paying, however you're affording it, it all is more beneficial. And then also, oh, same way, poverty, you're less likely to participate or to engage with public assistance, needing uh, federal assistance or help when you finish a college degree. And again, finally, I mentioned the voter participation rates as well. Uh, we think you should vote and those that finish college do so at a higher rate. Specific, specifically, I'll talk about the Christian education piece. Now, and again, I wanna remind you if there's a question to use the Q&A, um, we're eager to answer those questions for you. That first part is about the value of college in general. What do we think you should do and how, how it helps you in terms of your, of your uh, 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 enrollment and attaining a college degree. But um, NACAP is part of a sister organization to a group called the Council for Christian Colleges and Universities. And they also do a good job in promoting why a Christian college is worth it. And one of their publications last year said this, religious education has the best opportunity to form human beings who bless the world. This is from Shirley Hoogstra, who is the president of, 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 of the CCCU. I like this quote because this gets at the heart of what we do. We are not, uh, I am not a data-driven person, although we just shared a bunch of that information with you. I'm a mission-driven person. What's the mission of our schools and our member institutions? They are advancing Christian education. They're, they're challenging students to become uh, well-educated, really efficient and excellent in their fields, but also to be Christ-centered and minded of the spiritual growth that's a part of their lives. So the CCCU and NACAP, along with other organizations around the, around the country, are eager to, to make the case for why Christian education matters. And, and, and in that same publication, Here's, here's a um, perhaps a negative perception of Christian college university that's been out there before, is the academic quality, is the quality of education instruction the same at my local state institution or my private non-religious non or non-faith-based institution? The challenge for our schools is to ensure that we're having robust academic engagement. We must challenge your students. I heard one school recently say this, it's not the 13th year of high school. 
and it's not church camp. This is truly academic enterprise and academic exercises where the instruction, the expectation, and the pro productivity of students is measured against their peers and that they're being successful. Well, how do we know if our Christian colleges are doing that well? Well, graduate school, graduate, uh, graduates, graduation rates, um, success in graduate school, success in the career field. So our institutions, and we want to make the case for you to you that the first part of this is academic excellence, and we've got to do that. We're also going to bring together a dialogue on the role of faith and vocation, faith and your job. Um, I don't know that anyone might may not be called to be an accountant or a data and an analysis, data analyst, excuse me. Folks might say I'm called to ministry. So what our schools are saying is this, every one of you that are on this webinar, watching live, or even the video now on your own, you're sitting around, if you're looking at this, you're a person of faith or exploring faith. I know what you're called to do. Scripture is clear. You are called to love the Lord with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. That's your calling. Now, what are you good at? What are your strengths? What are your skills? What's your training in? That's the kind of dialogue that we want to have between my faith and my job. So you're called to serve the Lord. You're called to serve others. And in this case, our Christian colleges, our campuses are making that argument every day, getting you academic experience and getting you academic challenge, but also getting you ready to serve a world that desperately needs to know that. And our campus community's wholehearted commitment to raising the next generation of leaders dedicated to the cause of Christ. That's who we are, and that's what we're trying to do every day. Uh, there's a book that I reference uh, frequently when I talk about these things. It's of Body and Spirit by Peter Wehner, and Peter uh, says this, faith in many, in many campuses outside of our institutions, faith is an afterthought. Most of academic uh, higher education, um, you don't talk about faith. On our campuses, and our argument for you is, again, does it matter that the person um, standing in front of you, talking about creation, talking about uh, theory, math theory. Uh, does it matter that they're a person of faith? Two plus two at the state university in your hometown is four. Two plus two at a Christian university is also four. But at Christian campus universities, we're going to acknowledge the source of truth. Where does truth come from? I'm talking big T truth now, not little T. The big T truth that says the truth in scripture, the truth that, that Christ lives and lived on this earth and died and, 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 and is, is, is uh, living in us. That we have an opportunity to engage and have a personal, intimate relationship with him. Um, so it also matters that the person standing in front of your son or daughter in a classroom is a committed follower of Christ as well. Um, and so Christianity, we think, has to contribute that to higher education. We're going to, again, get you ready for the career, get you ready for what's going on. Um, but we also want to prepare you academically. Peter, Peter Wainer says this. I want to get it exactly right. The idea that faith is not on college campuses. It's a pity because the two grew up together, deeply influencing each other and still have much to learn from one another. Religious higher education isn't obsolete when it's properly conceived. It's more important than ever. That's why we do the work that we do every day. That's why we get up invigorated to tell you about a Christian college university and Christian higher education and why we do this work uh, all around the country. So um, we think that the opportunities are great for that. Um, we also want to make sure we have a first rate. I, I mentioned this already, but we want to have a first rate scholarship. You've got to be able to compete when you graduate and go out for the world and, and, and be competitive and be as good as or better than those who are coming from non faith based institutions. Uh, we want to have a deep, rich intellectual culture um, in many in many places. Faith isn't taking seriously, uh, but in our campuses, it is taking very seriously. And we want to make that argument to you today. Um, essential to conserving and transmitting the best of Christian thought. There's some sloppy Christian thinking out there. There are some places that are lazy in their thinking when it comes to Christian thought, and we want to um, offer an alternative to the, uh, to, the, to the perceptions out there that Christians cannot be critical thinkers. Uh, on my campus, uh, I was on it, well, I went to a, a seminar one time. We invited a guest to come in and talk about critical thinking to us. Her premise from the outset was, that to be a person of faith, you can't be a critical thinker. 
that her, that was from the outset. So her perception of what Christian schools are and do was that faith by itself eliminates you from being a critical thinker. Well, we disagree, and we have 211 colleges and universities around the country who would disagree as well. We're doing every every day they're working to engage and push students to think deeply. Um, something that we talk about uh, sometimes is and you don't hear a lot about is humility. Um, humility because we're all falling short. Um, our judgments are distorted. We see through a, gas, a glass darkly, as scripture says in the Apostle Paul. We only know in part. So we want to be humble about this. Uh, we want to work hard and present academic rigor and thoughtfulness. We also want to hold this two thing in, in our mind. We can be really good and deep thinkers, but we can also be humble about this. Our campuses are a place where uh, culture free, where we have culture where free expression is valued. You might um, be of the opinion that there are some institutions around the country in higher education where full free expression is not valued. Some of our current events going on now, you might see that, that frequently the view of the Christian thought is, is limited or marginalized on many larger secular campuses, not on Christian campuses. To the contrary, we want to explore and have full expression looking through the lens of a Christ-centered or Christian worldview. This is what liberal arts does. Um, I also had a family one time when they came to our campus and we said we were a Christ-centered liberal arts institution. They said, how liberal are you? I said, no, no, that, liberal, that, that doesn't mean liberal. It means that we're looking at the whole person um, we want to train you in what it means to, to be to know a little bit about science, a little bit about literature, a little bit about a lot about scripture, a lot about your discipline, but to be a better person, to, to be able to think more deeply and more fully about all of these issues. That's what a liberal arts idea is and engages. Peter Winter finishes with this, and we're almost done here, but he says, at their best, Christian higher education institutions appreciate the fundamental purpose of education, which is to shape the soul pursue the moral good, to love the right things. It is a deeply integrative view. Christian college are almost alone today in intentionally developing students who, in the words of Micah, act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly. That scripture alone, I love it. It frames what we're trying to do. When we're trying to make the case for Christian colleges and universities. This is our goal. Uh, I want I share, this is a slide that I want to share because our institutions, this comes from a conference where uh, enrollment leaders are talking about what should we be doing to make the case better. So we're trying to make the case that we're worth we're worth choosing. Christian colleges are worth it. We want to make a strong case for you. What's the best way to do that? If I had more minutes, I'd start telling you story after story of students that I know who are uh, in, went to law school and graduated the head of their class and they're leading law firms, doctors, um, uh, ministers, teachers, teachers of the year. So we have to provide, Christian schools and colleges have to say, here is the best result of, 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 our, of our product, if you will. We don't make widgets, we don't make tires, we're not making beans, this is not a commodity. Some people view higher education as a commodity. You're buying it like you're buying something off the shelf at Walmart or something at Am on, off of Amazon. Higher education is not a commodity. It's, it's more than that. It's an experience. So Christian colleges have to say to you, who do you want your son or daughter? Or who do you want to engage in this process with? Uh, so we want to work with enthusiasm and purpose, which is what I'm trying to convey to you. We want to have a high standard of excellence. Not everything we do in our industry is excellent. And we want to get rid of those things that are not excellent and in, in, in representing Christ well. Uh, this is all about people. I think uh, our education in general serves people well. But man, Christian college universities, this is what we're about. We're about people. I mentioned earlier that I'm not data driven, but I'm mission driven. But I'm also people driven. This is the core. This is the essence of what we do. And we need each other. We need our college universities. We need our Christian high schools. We need believers and Christians in public schools. We need people all around the country to work together in this industry. So is college worth it? We think it is, absolutely. Without a doubt it is. Is Christian college worth it? I would say so. In fact, um, uh, it's worth the investment. Uh, I'm, I'm in Nashville where a very well-known uh, person of faith talks about the evils of debt. I get it. I could not have attended my Christian college university without student loans. This was the key thing in attending a place that changed my life. Would I do it again? Absolutely. Would I do it carefully and well thought out? 
Absolutely. Uh, because these stories that you're of high debt and so forth, those are anecdotal. So look at the aggregate. Look at the aggregate instead of a story of one where this student uh, graduated from college with all this debt or, or this student went to didn't go to college and was successful. Looking at all the data, we think Christian college is worth it. We think the investment is worth it. And we think you'll find this to be the right choice for your family. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. This is from Luke. Won't you sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? If you lay the foundation, not able to finish, everyone who sees it will ridicule saying that person began to build and wasn't able to finish. So do we do think it's important to count the cost, get the information from these offices and campuses, find out what it costs, find out from them. There is money to be had at Christian colleges. Reject the idea that the sticker price is too much. Talk to the schools. We'll help you find ways to do it and find scholarships to make it happen for you. In the same way, those who do not give up everything you have cannot be disciples. Christian college universities seek to shape the souls of their students in accordance with their stated beliefs. It is a cause worth fighting for. That's why we do this webinar. That's why we get up every day to visit campuses and tell the story of our Christian colleges and universities. Bev, I'm not sure if there's been a question. If not, that's fine. But maybe there's a question or two that we might have that I could share in the next three minutes. Right. Yes, I do have a question here for you. And um, for the rest of you, if you have other questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A uh, section in your toolbar right now. But um, you talk about Christian colleges, you know, shaping the mind and the body, or mind, the soul, the spirit. The question is, is there room for respectful dialogue and exploration of different faith traditions? Or maybe students come to one of our Christian colleges or universities and doesn't have a faith of their own. How are our colleges um, <clears throat> having dialogue with them and exploring? It's a great question. So we have we have different different uh, viewpoints on this across our membership. Some schools are covenant schools, which means the individual student must be a believer herself or himself, and in order to go to that school. So those students are very aware. We have some schools who don't do not require a faith commitment to be enrolled. I worked at a school that did not require faith commitment. It was part of our mission to be a little evan evangelical in that regard. We wanted to spread the message of how a, a relationship with Christ could change your life. Um, so uh, what that does, it, it puts the students sometimes in a difficult situation because if I'm coming here to play football or I'm coming to play basketball and I don't care about the God thing, our schools will say, well, you still must engage with us. You're still going to have to take a Bible class or a, or a theology class, and you're going to have to go to chapel or, or a Bible study. And after this is over, we're going to make the case for why a life lived with for Christ is the best way. But if you disagree, then you'll go on and do, uh, do your own thing. So that's the first part. Secondly, what about dialogue on Christian campuses? Do our Christian colleges and universities have open dialogue about all these issues? Yes. Do people agree with how we approach it? No. You can think of the most popular, current, trendy social issues of the day, and our schools are going to engage that. We're not going to shy away from it. We're going to look at it through what our interpretation of Scripture, which is an orthodox view of Scripture. Um, we're not going to entertain in that regard other faith traditions um, that, would, that would not point folks to God through Christ. So we're going to do that. We're going to have an open dialogue. There's room for the student who has been a believer his whole life on our Christian colleges, and there's room for a student who has no faith or may be struggling. We think our, stu our schools manage that very well and move students along carefully and thoughtfully through that process. Great, thank you. Well, I don't see any other questions at this point in time. I think you've covered, you've covered it very well, Phil. We thank you for your time and your presentation. We thank all of our guests for attending as well. We now invite you to move over to the virtual fair platform, which is opening up in just a minute or so. Explore the virtual booths of many Christian colleges and universities. Their reps are waiting to chat with you. And we have many other Christian colleges and universities as well that aren't in the virtual space, but that you can explore at findyourchristiancollege.com. There's a school search engine there. Um, our in-person fairs will be highlighted there. We have about a little over 30 fairs coming up this spring, so hopefully there will be one in your area. We encourage you to go to the virtual fair now. It's open until, for the next three hours from 7 to 10, and um, then explore more Christian colleges at findyourchristiancollege.com. And if you have other questions, you'll see our email address there on your screen. Feel free to uh, email us, and we'd be happy to continue the dialogue. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Have a good day. Thank you.